Good morning, everyone. Welcome to the next part of our online service. I'm James. And I'm Kelly. And it's great to be with you today. We're going to be looking at the next part of our series, Lockdown But Not Locked In. And in this series, we're looking at some of the extraordinary things that people throughout the Bible did for God, even when they were on lockdown in their circumstances. Despite that, they were able to achieve amazing things for God because of the attitude that they had and what they chose to do with what they had rather than what they didn't have. So this morning, we're going to be looking at the church when it began. Last Sunday, we focused on Pentecost. Last Sunday was Pentecost Sunday, and we focused on the power with which God came that first Sunday at Pentecost in Acts chapter number two. And we're going to be journeying on from that this morning and looking at how it's so important for us to be filled with the Holy Spirit and empowered in everything that we do. I would say that you are on a lockdown when you're not filled with the Holy Spirit. You might do some great things as a Christian, but you will never do everything that you could do unless you are filled with the power of the Holy Spirit. And we'll pray for that to come into your life at the end of this morning. Yeah. And one of the first things that we want to point out to you today is about the early church experience in Acts 2. They experienced um, the ultimate provision, both spiritually and in terms of their circumstances. And I want to read from Acts 2, 42 to 47. And it says this. They devoted themselves to the apostles' teaching and to fellowship, to the breaking of bread and to prayer. Everyone was filled with awe as the many wonders and signs were performed by the apostles. All the believers were together and had everything in common. They sold property and possessions to give to anyone who had need. Every day they continued to meet together in the temple courts. They broke bread in their homes and ate together with glad and sincere hearts, praising God and enjoying the favour of all the people. Praising God and enjoying the favour of all the people. And the Lord added to their number daily those who were being saved. This account is truly exciting and invigorating. We see an almost childlike enthusiasm for faith and community in the early church. Empowered by the Holy Spirit, the first church community we know of go about finding an entirely new lifestyle that truly loves God and people too. Many of these people would have experienced the core elements of witnessing or being second-hand witnesses to the resurrection of Jesus and had been empowered by baptism in the Holy Spirit. As they went about their new lives, they experienced the true provision of God. They had all that they needed. Note that they devoted themselves to spiritual core elements of fellowship, teaching, prayer and communion. They weren't half-hearted, but they were devoted. They were totally won over by it all. They would have experienced persecution and yet they continued to be glad and praise God. How do circumstances affect your relationship with God and with other people? They cared and shared with one another so that no one went without and they stuck together through good and bad and thick and thin and ultimately God provided everything they needed. There was serious provision for the journey that they did, decided to take as Christians, but there was also another important element too. There was also power. And what you see in this particular piece of scripture here that Kelly's just read out came about when uh, straight after Peter had addressed a crowd of onlookers. And I'm going to read that to you right now. It says in Acts 2, 14 to 17, then Peter stood up with the 11, raised his voice and addressed the crowd. Fellow Jews and all of you who live in Jerusalem, let me explain this to you. Listen carefully to what I say. These people are not drunk, as you suppose. It is only nine o'clock in the morning. No, this is what is spoken of by the prophet Joel. 
In the last days, God says, I will pour out my spirit on all people. Your sons and daughters will prophesy. Your young men will see visions. Your old men will dream dreams. And he continues on from there with an incredible speech that sees 3,000 people added to the number of believers. And then you see the piece of scripture that Kelly just read out just a few moments ago in Acts 2, 42 to 47. You see this incredible group of people come together who share so much with one another and devote themselves to everything that God has for, for them. And all of this happened because of Jesus' resurrection. They were either first or second hand witnesses to it. And because the Holy Spirit had fallen upon these people. But the key was the power in Peter's boldness to speak out, as I've just read. As a result of this power and this boldness with which Peter spoke, 3,000 people were added to the, the number of believers in that day. Can you imagine that? 3,000 people in one cool. day would be incredible. That boldness came upon Peter, that man who denied Christ, that man who'd not really been that much used to anyone prior to Jesus coming into his life, that boldness had come upon you. And we later see a, another remarkable speech that Peter gives just be before the Sanhedrin. We see that slightly later on in Acts 4, and I'm going to read in a second from Acts 4, 8 to 13. And as Peter spoke, with John to the Sanhedrin. He is faced by priests and other officials. They were then placed in jail, but even so their message was so powerful that despite being on lockdown in jail, that number of people who were following, uh, following Jesus, that early church, grew to around 5,000 people. 3,000 a jump to 5,000 in such a short amount of time. And this is a little bit of the speech that Peter gives the following day, Acts 4, 8 to 13. He says this, Then Peter, filled with the Holy Spirit, said to them, Rulers and elders of the people, if we are being called to account today for an act of kindness shown to a man who is lame and are being asked how he was healed, then know this, you and all people of Israel, it is because by the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, whom you crucified, but whom God raised from the dead, that this man stands before you healed. Jesus is the stone you builders rejected, which has become the cornerstone. He says salvation is found in no one else, for there is no other name under heaven given to mankind by which we must be saved. And when they saw the courage of Peter and John and realised that they were unschooled ordinary men, they were astonished and they took note that these men had been with Jesus. What made them recognise, what made the crowd and the people recognise, take notice of these men and the message they had and to put their faith in the words of Jesus that Peter spoke out? Quite simply, because firstly, they'd been with Jesus and they'd witnessed his resurrection. Yeah. We can know that today. Yeah. And secondly, because they'd been filled with the power of the Holy Spirit. Yeah. Two words that really just every single time I read this account, and I love reading, reading this account because it gives me so much hope for my own life, are these words, unskilled and ordinary. When they noticed that they were unskilled and ordinary men, people really, really began to notice. They began to take, pay attention to their words. They began to think, how is it that these men have got this ability, this authority, this power with which to speak and are able to win over so many people with their persuasive and powerful and authoritative words? It's a little bit like if you were to go into a courtroom today and have no knowledge really of what it means to be a barrister but go into court and give a really eloquent speech that wins a case for your client. Could you imagine doing that when you have no formal legal training, when you've never been been the courtroom in your life, being able to go in and do that? Well they effectively did the equivalent yeah. of that. If you read this account for yourself and I encourage you to do so, they were full of the assurance 
the authority and the forthrightness that only comes by speaking the words of God. These men hadn't trained to be rabbis. They didn't have positions in recognised religious circles of the day, but they had been with Jesus. They were clothed with power from on high, so they were full of power for the journey. There was provision for all these people, but there was also power too. And I just want to say to you today that I believe you can access that same power of God in your own life when you not only recognise that Jesus is your Lord and Saviour, that he was raised from the dead, but when you have been filled with the power of the Holy Spirit. And the third point that we want to talk to you about today is around the scattering of the church in Acts 7. This demonstrates the ultimate perseverance. Further on in Acts 6 and 7, we see a speech given by Stephen, who was from a group of disciples that the first apostles chose to come out and do the work as the numbers of the church increased. He was seized and brought before the Sanhedrin, but he gave an incredible speech in Acts 7. Acts 7, 54 to 8, 3 tells of when Stephen was stoned to death for what he said. This was a horrific, terrible in just way to die. And why did he die? Because he challenged the leaders of the day to turn from religious obedience to God to a relationship with Jesus. Stephen spoke of seeing God himself in Acts 7 56 and yet was stoned. And we need to note here that religion wants observance, but relationships desire intimacy. Really good. Despite this horrific act, God works everything together for good, as Romans 8:28 reassures us. The persecution that broke out against the church saw Christians scattered further afield through Samaria and Judea, but all this did was send empowered believers to plant more churches and that reminds me so much of the situation that we're facing right now we're locked in our homes but the christian message our message of the relationship we have with jesus is reaching people across the world through the power of the internet and we have this amazing opportunity to share the good news of jesus despite our lockdown circumstances simply put if you don't have the empowerment and the illumination of the Holy Spirit, then you will always slip back into religion. And when you are persecuted, you need his power so that you can persevere like they did. No one ever achieved anything by giving um, up those things that we hold true to, but by being confident in the Holy Spirit and accepting his help to be bold and courageous in every opportunity. So we just want to remind you today to persevere. Perseverance is one of the key traits of a successful Christian. Someone who stands on the faith and the hope and the promise of God and does what is necessary to see the advancement of the kingdom. And you can do that today too. We want to encourage you today, don't we, Kelly, to not give up. We're in a situation, a time when it would be easy to give up. It would be easy to switch off. But I want to encourage you to think about like these disciples who were zeros going to heroes. You can do that today. And you could even look back on this lockdown time and think, well, maybe I've not achieved what I could have. Don't worry about that. Make a decision today that you're going to move forward into everything God has for you. It starts with taking those spiritual disciplines seriously, of prayer, of fellowship with other Christians, community with other Christians, of worship of God, of reading, a daily reading from the Bible. Yeah. But And so we're in a situation where we can feel almost a bit persecuted by our circumstances. But I want to encourage you to push forward today, to make a new decision, to push into everything that God has for you because he will help you persevere yeah. if you're determined he'll the power of the Holy Spirit will help you persevere he helps me daily to do things that I find really difficult to do he will give you provision and he will give you power as well so I just want to pray for you and I want to pray particularly for anyone who is not filled with the Holy Spirit as Kelly 
so rightly said in in my opinion if you are not filled with the holy spirit then you'll always be incomplete it's like you have so much going for you but you, there will always be lack in your life if you're filled with the holy spirit then you will not slip back into religion but you will keep pushing into a relationship with god last sunday just like that first pentecost was only the start it was a massively important day. It was a watershed day. It was a day when power came, but it was only the start. And we are living testimony of that first Pentecost, aren't we? Yeah. Living testimony of that first Pentecost. So I want to encourage you today to think about, if you've never been filled with this, the Holy Spirit, I want to, you to determine in your heart, yes, Lord, I am going to ask you to come and live by your spirit in me and not only live by your spirit in me but come and clothe me with power from on high come and fill me come and take me to places higher heights and deeper depth and depths than I've ever been to before and so let's pray for that if you don't have the holy spirit empowering you if you're not baptized in the holy spirit you will always there will always be something missing there'll always be some it will always feel insufficient it will always feel incomplete but if you're filled with the power of the holy spirit it will change everything so right now i would like to pray for you and i would ask you if you're with someone in your home if you're not then just put your hands out in front of you but if you're whether you've been filled with the holy spirit before or not i would ask you to link hands with someone just like kelly and i are now and let's close our eyes and let's pray and let's believe that God is going to come in power and come and empower you for the journey ahead of you. Let's pray. Father, thank you for all these precious people who are listening right now. And I just want to pray, Lord, for every single one that you will come right now by the power of your Holy Spirit. Lord, we know that when we become Christians, you fill us uh, with yourself. You make us temples of your Holy Spirit. You make us the equivalent of the Jewish Holy of Holies. You come and live by, in each and every one of us. But Lord, we know that you we need a further experience of your Holy Spirit. We need you to come and clothe us with power from on high, just like you did that first Pentecost. So I pray right now, Lord, by the power of your Spirit, not by might, not by power, but by your spirit right now, yes. Lord, you will come and you will fill hungry hearts. Remember, yes. guys, the Holy Spirit, he is attracted to hunger. Yeah. He He will. It's like a moth to a flame. The moth will start going towards the flame when it sees the flame come. Imagine that flame is your hunger right now. If you hunger yeah. and you desire, he will come and fill you. So hunger and desire after the Holy Spirit and he will come and fill you. Lord, for those people who've been filled and clothed with power from on high I, before, I pray you'll come and fill them afresh. Come and top them up. Come and give them what they need yes. for the journey. But Lord, come and fill your people for the first time. Come and fill, 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 fill. Fill to overflowing so they yes. don't have enough capacity can, to contain you. Yes. But Lord, yes. so that they are, want I to come and yes. give you something of you out to other people yes, as well so father i thank you for all these precious people yes. i pray you will empower them for the route that's ahead of them lord i pray you will give them provision you will mm. give them power you'll give them perseverance in everything that they're doing and i pray in jesus name that you will bless them fill them to overflowing may this be the day from which none of us ever go back and i yes. pray this in jesus mighty powerful name the name above all names yes, amen. amen 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 Amen. Well, it's been wonderful to be with you today. And again, if you've prayed that prayer for the first time and if you don't feel anything yet, can I encourage you, like we did last week, to keep praying yeah. and keep believing and just keep seeking God because if you're hungry, he will come. Uh, and, and if you still don't feel anything, please feel free to get in touch with a Christian who you know has had this experience before and you know will pray with you. Or well, why not give the church office a call in the week and we would love to pray with you yeah, but definitely. for now that's everything from us it's been wonderful to be with you we pray we're praying for you we love you we hope yeah. you have a wonderful day today take good care and god bless from both of us